there are a lot of motor options on the market. How do I choose which one to use? For FIRST Robotics competition teams, there are a lot of motors available to choose from to put on your robot. There are lighter duty, less expensive motors, or heavier duty, more expensive motors that are each suited to different kinds of tasks. Lighter duty motors are more suited to things like turrets or light duty rotary motion mechanisms, uh, while the more expensive, heavier duty motors are better suited to arms, elevators, drivetrains, that sort of thing. There are two types of motors in FRC, brush motors and brushless motors. A brush motor works by having physical brushes that are carbon or graphite connected to electrical leads to connect it to the commutator in the middle of the motor. The commutator is connected to the windings of the motor that interact with the permanent magnets stored in the motor casing. When energized, this allows the motor to spin. The commutator changes which coil in the motor is active at a given time. That allows the motor to spin continuously as the name suggests. A brushless motor doesn't have those same physical brushes that a brush motor does have. Instead, it uses a smart speed controller to actively control which coils are interacting with the permanent magnets in the motor. While a brushless motor can be a lot more power dense than a brushed motor, they are more expensive and a lot more difficult to use. Not every device on your robot needs to use a brushless motor, and it doesn't always need that hundreds of watts of power. You can use a brush motor in many situations that you can brushless motor in. There are several types of 550 class motors like this Neverest motor, and 775 class motors like this Redline that are available for teams to use. The Neverest motor has 14 watts of power and a huge thermal mass, which means you can stall it for a long period of time. This makes it really good for light duty tasks that may require position holding, like a turret in FRC. This 775 motor is a 380 watt motor. It has a little bit more power than a sim motor, but it runs at a faster speed. So there's a torque speed trade-off between those two. The trade-off being that if you stall this motor for virtually any period of time, it's gonna heat up a lot faster than something like your sim motor would. This makes the 775 really good for high speed applications in FRC, like a shooter or an intake. The tried and true workhorse of FRC is the two and a half inch sim motor. This motor is ideal for high load applications like your drivetrain, arms, elevators, anything of that sort. It has a lot of power and a lot of thermal mass. It also holds up while it's in a stall condition or when it changes directions quickly, which not all these motors handle as well. In the last few years, teams have been switching up their sims for these full-size Neo motors. It has similar, if not almost exactly the same performance as a sim motor, but in a much smaller and lighter package. Its power delivery is a little bit better than a sim motor, especially when warm. However, this full-size Neo is a brushless motor and requires a special motor controller to use. For the full-size Neo, that's the Spark Max motor controller. Note that there are several cables that need to be plugged into the Spark Max motor controller for this motor to work with it. There are three phase wires and the encoder cable. All four cables need to be plugged in for this to be a functional motor. The rest of the motors on this table are all brushed motors, which can use much simpler controllers with fewer wires connecting to the motor. Generally speaking, when selecting motors for your mechanism, you want to look at their stall torque and free speed, but also the overall power curve for that motor. Most of the motors we use in FRC have a published motor curve. That curve gives each motor's performance and various speeds that it's running at. Those curves and any additional data you may need for these motors are listed on those motors' web pages. It's important to take these parameters into consideration when you're designing your mechanism or selecting your motors, especially the available torque. Generally speaking, larger motors will last longer than the smaller motors. Something like a sim motor with a lot of thermal mass is going to run a lot longer than a redline motor that is much smaller and has a lot less thermal mass will. It's all about choices. You trade off weight or complexity or cost, but make sure to keep your parameters in mind. Make sure you know the limits of each motor when you're designing your mechanism. The first robotics competition rulebook is extremely specific about which motors are legal for use in the competition. Be sure to consult the manual for that year's game to check if your motors are legal. And that is how you choose a motor.